good morning everybody there's a lot of red light over here isn't there and welcome to Tuesday the show today on this beautiful snowy day I hope a lot of you guys are finding it decent and not you know bad out there because I know that it's snowy and, and it makes it difficult for people to drive and stuff like that and I get that Today's show is brought to you by Inspiration Exists, but it has to find you working. Inspiration Exists, but it has to find you working. All right. So, we're going to go over. Yesterday, I had a dental appointment, and that didn't go as well as I wanted it to. And we're going to have a follow up dental appointment today, but things are getting kind of weird now towards the Thanksgiving holiday. So, a dental appointment's going to be put off till next Monday, which is, okay, we'll live. <laughs> okay, so let's head on over to our, uh, uh, the main line over there, and let's do our warm-ups for the day. Now we're not using the uh, the remote microphone today because its battery is dead. So this last weekend, I got myself a scale. I love scales. Scales are the best. And I know that this is traditionally scales are a, a, a architect's tool because it's got, you know, it's got various sizes right here which are for scaling things up and scaling things down. So here is your standard inch measurement right here. And here is 3 16th scale. So if you were to do uh, something at 3 16th the size of the normal scale, you could use that. And here is you know just different sizes along here. And you can kind of see, I oh know you can't actually you can kind of see here that these are different scales. So this is this is a normal inch ruler here, just like a normal one. And then here is three sixteenths and one and one quarter and three quarters and three. I assume that three is not three times. Um, I assume that there's something that architects understand how to read all of this. That's not what I use these for. I love scales because you can pick them up easy. <laughs> and I know that's such a ridiculous reason to, to love a, a thing, but for eight bucks, it saves me doing the trying to pick stuff up thing with my fingernails. I can just place it down. And more importantly, with a scale, I can take and hold it up here and draw my line. Right? And I don't have to get involved in that. So I love scales. Scales are the best. The thing about art is sometimes it's best to think outside the box, right? I mean, we have these thoughts that certain things belong to certain people. You know, like a scale belongs to an architect. And the truth is that we can use any tool we need to get the job done. I mean, provided you're not stealing your buddy who's scale from next to you, or your dad's scale. Sorry, dad. It wasn't intentional and I was gonna return it, I promise. But, you know, as long as, as, long as you're not, you know, if you just go to the store there's nothing that says that this particular tool or that particular tool can't be used by anybody. It doesn't require a degree, you know. So, I'm going to go on ahead and just put in our distance markers. I like the fact that in my rush to show you how awesome the scale is, my lines are crooked. But that's okay. That's sort of part of the point, right? The point is, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just practicing here. 
That's all this is, is practice. Let me get this camera straightened out here. At least a little bit better. Okay, as we've oft done before, this is a 0 0.4 uh, millimeter fine liner. I actually think it's a 0 0.4 centimeter. I don't think it's a fourth of a millimeter. I don't know, do we have millimeters on here? Think about scales, it might be. Okay, <clears throat> 0 0.4. We're going to go on ahead and we'll lift our elbow off the table, make sure our wrist is off the table as much as possible. We're going to try to draw a line. Do the same thing here. Then, from point to point, we're going to look here and we're going to look at our destination. Start here and look at our destination. Start here and look at our destination. Turn it this way, same thing. Right. And we're going to do the candy canes here. I'm going to go up and over and down. I didn't even get close. <laughs> and up and over and around. Oh, well. All righty. Today is the 24th. So we'll remember where we were. All right. Okay, let's switch back to our main monitor. Okay, so what we're doing today is I was working on a painting. I want to practice being painterly. And I have been trying to figure out how to get the painting effect to show up on, on the tablet. So that's what we're working on now. Okay, so what we've got here is a painting I'm sort of working on. Um, what we are looking at as an inspiration is this painting here. I, I mimicked the pose, but obviously put my character in. And now we're going to try just get some kind of painterly effect on this. So that's where we are here. Just trying to get some kind of painterly effect. So, first things first, it is in fact a brand new day. So let's go on ahead and clean the monitor, because I'm sure the monitor has happily and blissfully gathered a whole bunch of dust from the night before, even though I was working on this last night. There we go. And we'll begin to work. Now I've set up a couple of layers here where I've got like the drawing layers up on a different layer up here like this. Um, and then we've got the skin layer and then we've got the hair layer. and back here we've got just the background so we're working on kind of all of that we don't need this anymore so we can go ahead and dump that okay <sighs> so my problem is I'm looking at this and I've got a great amount of 
gradient going here, I found this wonderful brush, this waterly brush, which allows me to, to do sort of, uh, you know, add sort of this brush effect in here. Right, I'm just gonna add, I'm adding color to her cheeks. And you're like, what are you doing? Look at the damage you're doing. But then I'm gonna take the smooth tool. And I'm just gonna smooth this out. It adds the color in, but doesn't actually cause the So now she's got color in her face going in, but I still want a little bit more, right? Kind of want to, I mean, she is alive after all. We don't want her to be dead. So I put blood in her cheeks. This is where, when we, when we look at like the way that humans work, we're looking at areas in our face where the blood vessels are close to the surface of the skin. And that's right through here and right through here. They're very close here. This is a, um, an area where it's the the body is trying to protect this part of the of the skull and so it's keeping it warm or keeping it cool or whatever it's to also encourage the correct blood flow through the nose um, so we've got a lot of blood flow through this part of your of your uh, face this is why people and I'm just smoothing it down a little so that it's because I like a little bit of painterly strokes kind of thing going on here. The same thing goes with the top part of your head. This part is all bone right through here, and it's really tough bone. So this area actually starts to turn blue is what it's doing. So we're going to hit the other side of it over here, and it's not that it's actually turning blue, but what's happening is this area up here just it gains a little bit of darkness, a, a little bit of blue right through this zone. There's no, there's not a lot of blood vessels right here. And so you don't get a lot of the blood vessels. And the same thing goes right strangely here and here. And this is all because this is all bone right through there. Um, and so we'll smooth that in just to make sure that, that isn't so strange, right? We'll smooth all that in. Let's move all of this in like this. There we go, just like that. And it just adds a little bit of color to the, the picture, some variation. We haven't even talked about reflected color yet. We're just talking, good morning, Donald. We're just talking about the basic color of the skin. Because I'm kind of thinking of doing something dramatic because I feel like my problem with painting is there's not enough drama. There's none. I mean, it's it's just too flat. Um, so I'm going to try something here. We're going to try taking some of this color here and dropping it way down. And then looking at this from this point of view here, kind of going in this right coming through this area here and just taking a look at what we could get with some value change here now don't worry about this I can the, I did this specifically on a different layer so I can adjust its value or I can adjust the strength to take a look at what I'm doing here see whether I'm actually damaging the painting or not by doing this, right? So we'll take then the smooth tool, we'll smooth this out. I feel like, generally, I am too cautious 
And the best part about digital painting is that I don't have to be too cautious, right? I mean, I don't have to do that. I can definitely let this go any direction I want. So let's see what happens when I give a lot more shadow on this side of the face. Get a lot more in here. And she just looks like she's been in a fire here. Right? We can take a look at it and see whether dropping that value down does anything or raises it or anything like that. Now, she, uh, for this character specifically, she's very smooth skinned. It's her heritage. I didn't like that. Okay, that's fine. We'll go back in here though, and looking at, there are a few things we want to do, like through here, in her eyes, this area right here gets dark. And then women tend to put a lot of darkness on, on the outsides like this, as part of their makeup regime. So we'll just come in here and do that. And then I'll smooth out this section here through the nose. There, I don't like that. And I'll leave just a little bit right through here because we really want to emphasize that there's an eyelid there. Right? Now, one of the other things that intrigues me about shadows and shadow lines is sometimes there's like a dark ridge it's not I'm not gonna keep this but there's like a dark ridge that shows up between the white and the dark side of the of the picture you know sort of like that and I like the idea of smoothing it in and so we're kind of doing that kind of thing the other thing I'm going to do over here is this. Maybe she's got a nose. After all. Right. But though we're getting better on this one now, it's looking a little bit better through this zone right through here. Um, I'm feeling like it's not looking better down here, right? We need sort of a little bit of a emphasis there and there, and maybe even across like this, right? I mean, we're looking at just the planes of her face, kind of thinking about this and like, why am I having a hard time seeing the planes of her face? So I'm just smoothing it out a little and bringing it into the painting just a little bit there. showing a little bit more of what's going on. I think that's better. One of the things we can do that'll help, because right now it's kind of dramatic, um, is put in the, the hair that's on her face. Right? But even with this, I'm noticing that they just use this. Right. 
would put in her eyebrows. This helps a lot into feeling like this isn't so weird. I'm putting her eyelashes. Really? I thought I added a layer. <laughs> Great. Oh, well. Because this just added into the pen layer. That's all right. We'll fix it. This means redoing it. That's all right. I wanted to redo it anyway. It's funny how you get a design concept in your head on how a character looks and you run through it. Her eyebrows have these little brows, these pieces that start right here, go long and then come down in a corner where they sort of have eyebrow hairs that do this. And it's sort of an interesting thing that that's something I am you know, familiar with. I've gotten used to that in this character. The reason I'm doing this on a different layer is because no matter which way we look at it, We want to be able to turn that off and turn it back on again, but we also want to be able to be on the skin layer and not interrupt it, right? So now if we turn off the guides, she's looking a lot more dramatic. It's interesting how much eyebrows change things. I've seen a lot of tattoo eyebrows too. Um, I think that in the future there'd just be growth stimulation here. Although I have noticed that some of these people definitely are intentionally plucking their eyebrows and then tattooing eyebrows on there. I don't know. Is that because they are uncomfortable with where the eyebrows ended up? Maybe. But either way, <laughs> it's between them and the and their tattoo artist, I guess. So, I, I've seen that as well, though. I've seen that definitely. But there we go. We've got that going. Let's go back to the main layer. And let's work on a couple of pieces parts here. Um, using this very dark brown that I've got up here. Her eyes are a very dark brown. So I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to give that darkness and blend that darkness in here. Right? Nope, this one. I'm just going to go in and smooth this out just a little bit here. I had been looking at uh, one of the artists that I follow. Yeah, I'm not answering that. The middle show. So. One of the artists that I follow is um, yeah, that makes sense. And I think it might be something to do with they don't like the placement of their eyebrows. Like they don't like it down here, they like it up further or they like it aimed upward or aimed downward. 
Um, and so I feel like that it probably has something to do with um, shape of eyebrows. And that's a that's cultural or a trend or something like that. So I'm kind of going out with, eh, they're done with that. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. Maybe that's something a colony will do or, um, you know, something like that. But in the Unity proper, nobody does that anymore at this time. That doesn't mean that they won't. It just means that they're not likely to at this point. Okay. Okay. This is called a lacrimal, and it's that little dot. This is the bottom of your eye. We're gonna catch it in a second. Possibly. It's um it's one of those interesting things where peer pressure is an amazing thing. And it may not even be peer pressure, it might just be peer interest. I don't even know what the word would be here. But you know, it's just an interest in doing what her buddies did, you know? That's totally cool. Got nothing with that. Sometimes you do that, and that's just the way it goes. Again, I'm going to come over here, and I'm just going to rough outline this in this darker color. Kind of bring it around. Right, I'm going to just bring this color in. Okay, I've got this red behind her that, you know, we're going to have to deal with at some point in time. That's all right. We'll get there. I feel like this red that's behind her, there is, um, get a larger brush. I'm gonna snap this color right here and just go down this color right here. That red behind her is gonna reflect on her skin at some point. They stop uh, sweat from getting into your eyes. That's their entire job. You get forehead sweat and it gets stopped right here and it prevents it from getting into your eyes. That's what eyebrows are for. That's their whole job. So <laughs> it's interesting how they have a job. <laughs> it is a real job. Well, thank you. I, I actually had to look up lips and then like try to figure out how to draw them. Um, but thank you very much. I actually had to think about this because the original character design for this says that she has, you know, close to the same skin color lips. But then I realized that that's, I mean, she's not wearing makeup. She doesn't wear makeup. That's This character is not a makeup person. So... Um, she's not wearing makeup. I, her eyes are just the really dark 
you know, she's got dark black hair. So, but the lips worked really well. I mean, I was kind of surprised at how painterly they looked and how well they turned out. I was kind of shocked, to be honest. Um, but I'm proud of it. Okay, I'm gonna go in here. I'm on the hair level now, speaking of hair. And I'm just gonna go in ahead and bring this hair in. All right. And we're just giving it some, oh, I hate to say that we're giving her hair body, but we're giving her hair body. So she's like doing a real good shampoo regimen here. Now I've put her hair on a different layer, which makes it easier to deal with. And that gives her hair a lot of direct control here. And that, that makes that rounder. Now we we'll get to highlighting here at some point. And when we highlight, we'll highlight with, with um, white and that'll go in and cut through that a lot and that'll help us a lot. Now, Asians who have dark, dark, dark hair will end up with a blue highlight, right? Just a little bit out here like this, right? Just enough to, right? And it gives a little bit of character to the to the, uh, the coloration, but it's reflecting the sky effectively. Is what's going on here, right? So, okay, moving in here, I'm gonna look at the eyes specifically. The eyes, of course, you know, we're looking at them and going, oh, look, the sclera is white. Of course, we've had this discussion before, the sclera actually is not white. Um, and if we go, I'm gonna name some of these layers. Oh, it's in Japanese, that's nice of it. Switching languages. Okay. Moving on then. Skin. And then. Okay. Now we're going to go on ahead and add a raster layer, which is highlight. Okay, the key here behind the highlight is this. We come in here and we take the highlight, we take our brush, we bring it down just a little bit, not that much though. Well, we are having issues. Right there. And what we can do is now add this and this into the lacrimal layer. We'll do the same thing over here. And this indicates water in our eyes, because of course our eyes are watery. But it also gives a highlight to that part there. Then we do this. and it's reflecting whatever is going on around her. Maybe this is a window or a window light of some sort. Whatever it is, we're sort of seeing it that way. And that gives her eyes real life. It brings them to life. Yeah, that long, beautiful black hair I think some part of me envies that. 
I had long hair in the 80s. It was cool. Most people tell me that I probably shouldn't admit to it, though. Yeah. So, on this same highlight thread, we're going to go over here, and we're going to just not erase is what we're looking <laughs> We're not going to erase. We can hit some of the outside parts of this too. Right? And that just gives us a little bit of just this. And we'll add one or two little strands out like that. And even though they go in front, it helps give the impression that we've got something really going on here. Right? Because nothing's ever perfect. Right, and so we'll come along here, highlighting up on this cheekbone here, right? And then we'll do the same thing with her lips, right? Just a little bit there to give just a, a feeling of wateriness, like there's water there. Obviously, she licks her lips, that makes sense, we all do. Um, and then we'll go along like this, on the outside edge of her ear. Um, there's obviously a light source right here like a very bright light and it's just off to the left here and it's shining on this part of her face so we're gonna get kind of that kind of effect going on right here because that light is hitting this side of her nose her head's in shadow right here but we've got I mean just thinking about my lighting and where is my lighting on this I think we have one light going from back here going this way, right? And then we have definitely a very strong key right here. And it's hitting everything on this side of the face. And we hitting just down here on her neck as well. Right, so that's where that key is. So we wanna make sure that a couple of things are happening. One, make sure that the outer edge of her ear is illuminated. Her ears stick out. It's one of the adorable things about her. I think it's great, right? Because it's just funny, right? These single strands of hair coming down will be illuminated by the light directly. There'll be something that just picks up by that light, right? So she'll get that picked up part of that. I still feel like the values in her face aren't dark but that's right, we're working on it. And we'll come down on her neck like so. There we go. Just like that. And that's given a lot of, yep, yeah, she's much closer to the light source on the left side than on the right. Um, whatever's going on on the right side, not as much of a light source, right? So, okay. The other thing I wanna look at is her eyes in here. Because I feel like, first of all, I feel like this has gone too far into this zone. It really should be backed off. It needs to match over here. Right, I feel like I've got kind of a tear duct thing going on here I have to fix. So let's go ahead and back that off on both sides. So we'll go on ahead and go in here onto the skin side. Let me brush this in. And all we're doing here is just cleaning this up a little. Um, we've got a little bit of a, and that same thing coming in here. We're probably gonna have to go back in and darken this out. Because it's looking pretty cool, but I don't feel like it's as dark as it should be. Like the values aren't as dramatic. We're not getting as much of a dark in that zone as I'd like. 
So I'm going to go back in and bring up my water, my brush size again. I'm going to go in here and just darken this area more in this one spot. And we'll brush it out and work it through. The thing about this is we're going to work it in. We're going to work it into the into the actual painting. So we're going to come back out here and we're just trying to work it back. Now this color here, which is this highlight, we're going to work it back into the painting. And again, I'm going to still make sure that I've left enough highlight room up here for her eyelid. Okay, I'll see you later. Take care of yourself, my friend. And if you're not back until tomorrow, that's also okay. Probably still be working on this painting. <laughs> Odds are good. I'm just merging this in. I like the painterly brush strokes, but I also want it to be blended. So I'm gonna bring this around like this. Much better. I mean, don't necessarily need her eyes to be recessed or sunken in. but I do want them to look less. I don't know, I want them to be in here a little bit. I'm gonna pull this out a little bit more. I'm just gonna come up here and clean this up a little. There. So. I don't know, am I regretting this? I might be regretting this. This is the other problem with being an artist, is sometimes you look at your paintings and you think, what did I do that for? What was I thinking? Well, that didn't help any. It will lighten it up a little.
All right. There we go. So now we're on the black hairline. I'm gonna go in ahead and just tap some of this black hair coloration that we've got now. It's her hair is black, but it's got a number of little bits of, and there we're gonna put in the baby hairs, right? That's these little teeny hairs that that we get on the sides. These sometimes aggravate a lot of my Asian buddies. Not necessarily the guys, because these guys all wander into their beard and it's okay, but the girls tend to find it disturbing and annoying. I think they're adorable. So I think it's silly for them to find that to be weird. I think that they feel like they've got a beard going and they really don't. It's just like an extension forward of their hair and it nobody sees it as a beard but it's still I find them to be just absolutely adorable I think it's great um, it's like a lot of things I envy people who have different things going on with their their bodies and designs like everybody does you know you're always like oh man kind of wish my hair would do that you know and stuff like that that's okay I'm going ahead and just go down to the dark area here. I'm going to put in some skin parts like right here for her ear. Because we want that to be a dark shadowed area right through here. All right, we got a couple of like random things going on here. Same thing over here. We're just gonna bring the brush up. Right, we're gonna go through here and just smooth it out a little. You just need to know that this is happening over here. You don't need to know all the details, you just need to know that the ear is occurring correctly. Same thing we'll do over here. You don't need to know more than just that the ear is happening, but we do need to make sure that the ear is happening correctly. <laughs> right? We'll go up onto the highlight layer and fix some of this highlight, which is kind of a little abrupt over there, but we'll get it. Okay, let's talk a little bit about, like, the rest of her clothing here. We're going to have to put in her uniform and stuff like that. It's hard to see her uniform because we... <laughs> there we go. That's easier to see our uniform. Uniform is... The uniform here in, in the Union is a, uh, a darkish blue. So we're going to go on ahead and bring up this guy here. And we're going to go to a new layer. And naturally, we'll put it underneath the skin, which means we're going to have to trim the skin back, but that's okay. And we'll just lay out the rough on this. All right. The reason she's got that red thing behind her is because it offsets really nicely to blue. All right. So we're just going to go on ahead and lay this in. Ooh. 
We're going to do way too much laying this in. Yeah, be working with this entire shape as a unit. So um, we're gonna go to the skin layer and we're gonna trim out all the stuff that isn't part of her uniform. Okay, so we're gonna go through here. I'm just gonna trim into the point where it's this is where it's so beneficial having a computer because we couldn't do this in a real world thing, right? There we go. This allows us to know what we really need to do here, because we've got to go through here and do this. We've got to go through here and do this. And it's important that we extend past the zone here. We're going to have to trim back on a lot of this anyway. And this watery brush, it leaves error marks, which I love. Okay, we'll do the same thing over here and just trim. Now the truth of the matter is, now that I'm looking at this, I don't want to trim it. However, definitely I'm seeing that her skin is jaundiced more than I want it to be. So we're gonna have to talk about this because that skin color is very, almost unnatural. So let's look at it a little bit. And let's do some adjustment to it. Transform, uh, no it's image something. this layer we're going to tonal correction so here's where we're going to take the, the the tonal curve and we're going to want to look at this in a different manner there's a lot of red there's a spike in green and there's a spike in blue. What really needs to happen is we need to keep the red. So we're gonna bring the spike up like this so that it turns redder. And we're gonna back off on the green. Right? And that's what's really gonna start happening here is it's going to change her skin tone to, oh, let's not do that. to a richer color, but one that's a little bit closer to a real human being. <laughs> right? If we add a little bit of this blue, it goes pink. Her skin is still not, she's not, I mean, she still has to have an Asian tone, which gives her a little bit more olive but I'm looking at this as that kind of uniform, uniformity here. So if we bring up that green. Right? I'm looking at my skin tone, looking at her skin tone. I'm pretty close there. That's better. Much, much less jaundiced. And sometimes you just can't see it until you put in all of the other colors. You just can't see it, all right? Okay, so I'm happier now with her, her face, 
not as weird of color as it used to be. We're going to add some other colors up there, but we want to add those colors once the entire painting is together. So let's go back ahead and continue down here, just putting in all of the base for this. And making my computer chug out a lot. Over painting on this because I really want to get this base in. Once the base is in, we can go on ahead and do different things. Ha 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 ha. So that's actually part of the humor of this particular character. She's in her 30s, but there was a lot of genetic manipulation. And by the way, hi V. Um, there was a lot of genetic manipulation on her colony, and she's like a true-bred Asian because it was a Chinese colony that uh, didn't allow interbreeding and things like that that she broke away from. So she's supposed to be in her 30s, but she doesn't look it at all. She's very short. She's very young-looking. It makes people misunderstand her and underestimate her a lot. It's part of the character trait is that she's supposed to look like she's 14 or 15. And then she's the captain of a ship and everybody does the, but how can you be a captain? You're a kid, <laughs> you know, sort of thing. And that's, that's part of the humor of this particular character. It's maybe not humor, but some of her aggravation. She gets very mad about that at some point, and rightfully so. People, I mean, she's got the stripes. They should be respecting the stripes, not her age. You know, not not saying she's you know too young to to do the job. So that's her argument on this one. People just look at the. Um, look at her face and say she's too young to do any of these things it's an interesting aspect that I had put into well thank you by the way um, it's an aspect that I had put into um, into the original version of this the Star Trek version of this the character that was in the Star Trek version was also remarkably young she I mean and both of these characters have had a child I mean I moved I moved over all of the attributes of, um, of Julie Cochran into Lee Chang. And she had a child, and the child is gone now. Um, it's also part of her pathos as a character. And so... Um, Oh, it's time for us to take a quick break. But I'm in the middle of talking about the character, so... <laughs> okay, so yeah, she's... Um, she's... Well, thank you. I, 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 you know, it's one of those kind of things that I keep reading up there and going, I can't tell whether you've said that already. Okay, guys. Top of the hour. All good artists should stand up and stretch. So, get up, stretch. Oof, we'll stretch. Ah, it's a good thing too, because I kind of needed it. All right. And then we'll walk around real quick. Walk around the room. Make sure you're getting exercise in a little bit anyway. We'll go over here, we'll look at the snow. Look at all that snow. The strange irony of life, because Colorado, we were. <laughs> It's so weird, but this is so typical of Colorado. It was, you know, warm yesterday, and we were taking a walk, and 
the whole family walked around the neighborhood and waved to our neighbors and we didn't even wear jackets and today it's snowing such a Colorado thing to do <laughs> all right we'll continue back here There it is. Continue back. All right. Now I've uh, I brought my pen up a little bit, and all I'm doing here is just highlighting this area. And again, just like with the ears, the everybody looks at the face. So it's not as important that we get much more on this than just the contours. We're heading into the contours of the body. Just enough to make this a viable outfit. You know, you can tell that it's an outfit. I know that we've got a light source from over here somewhere, so I'm gonna bring just a little bit into here on this side. We're gonna do more on this side than we are on this side, so. And just bring this down. Here we go. There we go. And again, we're just trying to bring in the value to give shape. So this isn't just a block, it's rounded. Because, um, you know, of course, our bodies are round. Some of us more than others. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. This is the best time to follow contours like the collarbone, which goes across here. Before I trim through here and cut all this off, I can go out like that. I can run off the edge of the, of the zone. <coughs> Excuse me. Because I'll trim back on this at some point. Same thing over here. I'm going to go on ahead and just bring this back around. We want to bring into the contour like this. Right. There we go. There. And we'll snag some of this and bring the contour under like that. I'll bring the front of her arm like that in. Oh, that could be fun. Captions are unique, I've noticed. I'll try to move the microphone closer to me, though, so that it makes those captions a little easier. Sorry for spiking it out. Um, okay, so we're going through here, and I'm just trying to get the contours of this outfit. Um, the outfit has the green piping, which we're going to have to put in for her commander's piping, which is through here in that area. But I'm going to put that on a different layer. Okay. Um, so that, that green piping is up here. I want to make sure my brush is the same width as the piping, or at least roughly the same width, before I go in and put that in. All right, because her... Captain's uniform has this green piping, right? And so we'll just go in here and just put this green piping in. And I am obsessed with the word piping, clearly. Okay. going down here. I'm just putting in this. I love the idea of a double-breasted outfit. I think they are the coolest things. And I know, I know that it started with Star Trek II. 
with the what they call the monster maroon uniforms. Those, and they're called monster maroons even though they're actually blood red. Um, but VHSs were not the world's best. Color correction was not the world's best back in the 80s. And so they always looked maroon to all of us. And we all felt like they were maroon, which is kind of funny because now when you see those uniforms show up at conventions, they can range from, you know, this shade of red right here all the way to a very deep, almost purple maroon, depending on whose VHS VCR you used to base your pattern off of. Um, there is a... There is an outfit of sort, very similar to the Star Wars 501st, which does um, the, you know, sort of the same kind of thing for Star Trek as the 1701st, which is a sort of nod to the 501st, obviously. But they were doing, for a long time, you know, what they'll do is they'll come up with all of the actual color codes, the fabrics you can buy to get an accurate version of the Monster Maroon. And it turns out the Monster Maroons are red, <laughs> blood red, which makes it funny. I say that because I had my grandma back in the day. <laughs> she was trying to make me one of those. And we had this maroon fabric already picked out and everything. She never got very far with it because she didn't understand the directions. And since she was my grandma, it's not like she really knew what was supposed to, you know, what the uniform was supposed to look like. She was my grandmother. She tried. It was great. I was so proud of it. But yeah, I think part of the reason that I have always been fans of the double-breasted outfit is because of the Monster Maroons in uh, Star Trek, which makes total sense. So if I'm going to draw my own comic, my own way, <laughs> then I get to have double-breasted costumes, double-breasted uniforms, and that's just cool. And I'm sure that there is a space reason for it. And I'm sure it's a good one. Okay, we're going to take this blue here, and I'm going to darken it up. I'm going to go down here, and we're just going to kind of go in here. Why am I on pin? Because I want to abuse myself. That's what it is. Um, so we're going to darken this out. And darken down in here in this area. Heading under our arm like this. Go. We're just gonna, we're just kind of bringing the color in here. We're just bringing the color down a little bit through this area. It's off the bottom of the picture, and I want the the values to start dropping as we get to the bottom of the picture and start getting out of the out of the frame. So I'm gonna be bringing some of these values down. Bring the values out like that. Even out on the front edge of her body where it's going to be highlighted. I think it's fun. I think it's always amazing to watch things like that happen. I watch uh, live draws all the time for this very reason. I'm just bringing in some depth 
to this, some value to the, to the various parts of this so that there's some depth in like the inner cusp of the shoulder right here where this section of the body is going to be shielded from that light. We've got this very bright light source right here, which is clearly lighting up this side of her face and it'll have to highlight across this part of her uniform as well. But we need to kind of get there first, you know? So, next thing I think I'm going to start doing here is getting, we're getting very close to the point where I wanna, um, I'm gonna want to move into this zone here. I'm gonna want to start trimming the outside edge and trim around the body. But I wanna make sure I've got all of my highlights in and everything like that so that we're ready to go. I'm gonna make sure this is good here, right through here. It's already picking up the red from underneath it. It doesn't need that yet. We're gonna come back in and do that in a minute. All right. Yeah, right there, and that's it. Now I'm feeling like, like I said, we don't need to be that detailed on this, so we're gonna go on ahead and just trim in. So let's go on ahead and go to this, grab my brush or my eraser. I'm just gonna trim to this part. Oops, too much in. It's all right. Wonderful thing is I have a button for undo. All right, I'll we'll come up over here. There we go. And we're just gonna cut through that area right there. Come up here. Piping standalone. There we go. So, now we have a highlight section right up here. And that's all of these parts right up here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this highlight area and I'm just going to keep going down on her uniform and put in this highlight. Right, because it's gonna be right along the edge here. Now right here, just there. And I think this piping is reflective, which would make some sense. I mean, if she got accidentally spaced, you'd want to be able to shine a light and see the, the reflection come back. Okay, now that we've done that, we can tell already that the hair doesn't go underneath like it's supposed to. So I'm gonna fix that real quick. I'm just gonna bring it down like this. Bring it over like that. I'm actually gonna to need to trim down like that. Brush, 
or bring that brush size down again. And now we're gonna be able to go in and just do this. And that gives it more of a, I mean, she's got hair, but the hair is going to be, <laughs> it's not gonna be perfect. Nobody's hair is ever perfect. And obviously she's standing outside doing a thing, you know, in the sunlight and in the wind. And so something is going to mess with her hair. Her hair cannot be flawless. Okay, looking at my guide though, I think I wanted her hair to be higher, which I think is, it, it, with this particular character, I have to be careful. She's got a lot of face, <laughs> a lot of forehead, and so I've gotta be very careful not to go too far. If I go, if I trim off too much of her hair, it really does make her look like, it, it adds too much to the effect of her being a child. Um, Part of the genetic manipulation that they did was that these people tended to have the larger heads and things like that. That's going to be kind of part and parcel of the character. But we don't need to make it that dramatic. She looks a little harried. <laughs> Life's been rough on her. <laughs> okay, that's funny. I've been writing this character for now about six months. And so part of the reason that it's funny is because I can imagine her being somewhat harried. She's... She's uh, an interesting individual as far as a character goes. There's a lot of depth to her. I'm trying to work in here. All right, there we go, better. Now we can take this brush and do this. Just giving a little bit of depth to this whole picture. There we go. So now we've got a number of like random things going on here. It gives some reality to this. Above the highlight, I'm going to add a new layer. Okay. This is where things are going to start talking about our OSL, which is object source lighting. Right. We now have to look at what's reflecting, right? We got a light source that's hitting her shoulder right here. This is blue. So it's gonna bounce that blue right up here. So we're gonna try to get that going for us here. We're gonna try to get this blue coming off of her uniform onto her face without really making a disaster out of it. So I'm not horribly good at OSL. So we're gonna have to, this is gonna be an experiment here. Right. Because um, obviously that's too much. Now it looks like she just put really bad makeup on. But you can bring it back until it makes some logical sense. Like a 50% makes some sense there. We've got some red coming from back here. So we're going to put that on this side of the face. Same thing, it's kind of this object source lighting. Then we'll go a little bit into her ear here. This is just a source of light from this side. Okay, there we go. 
it gives a little bit of, I mean, she still looks like a child, but <laughs> she always will. But it gives a little bit of, uh, like, the background's doing something to her, you know, kind of making at least a little bit of this pop out. So, I'm going to mute it a little bit more, I think. I want to mute it down. Actually, I'm looking at this and going, gosh, I feel like that pink is actually kind of nice. It's adding a, a nice color to her, to her face here. So maybe I will just keep extending it out over here a little, making her look a little bit more real. And I'll let it mix in here and get kind of a purple going for it. <laughs> Strangely enough, I kind of got carried away with the pink, but I like it. I like the way it looks. I wonder if it would happen if I added it as a multiply. Right? As a multiply, it adds the color in like that, and you can see it kind of made a mess. But if I bring it back out, well, first of all, let's make sure we've got it leveled out. This is definitely one you want to use, use the smoothing brush on. Right. She definitely got this is like when your kid gets into your mom's makeup. You know, and you're like, really? Really? The kid comes out, look, I put makeup on. <laughs> Not like that's ever happened. The highlight should be on top of this, but there we go. This actually did seem to bring a lot more color into this picture. So let's take a look there. I think that's might that might have been what I was looking for earlier when I said I didn't feel like there was a lot of depth to this to this picture. I think we're here. That's adding a lot of depth to this picture. I think if I come down here into this section, like her neck, and just do that. That'll help A, very much highlight her face. Right? And B, give a lot more drama to the picture. There we go. That looks a whole lot better. Doesn't it? Now we're working the now we're working it. I mean, she looks more like a Pixar character at this point, but that's okay. Anime doesn't translate that well to um, to real pictures. I mean, it can, but it doesn't translate as well. The anime manga look. Trying to kind of. Oh, I'm on the wrong color. So, what we're trying to do here is just kind of wash out some of this brown. Uh, that's part of our problem, is that's still on. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's good. I find the closed captioning to be entertaining, like entertainingly funny sometimes, 
what it decides and what it decides not to, or it translates, especially I have done shows where I'm talking about parts of the world, right? This is a, a comic world that I've been working on for most of the time that we've been in COVID. And I find the um, captions have a hard time with some of the words <laughs> that I say when I start talking about random funny things about, you know, say, Star Trek or, you know, it doesn't understand classes of ships or Klingon words or things like that. And it cracks me up because they don't get very confused. Smoothing this highlight along. So we're just kind of cleaning up now in the cleanup phases of this particular picture. So I'm out on the highlight side, and we kind of want to do this, right? We want to have our uniform is... Not only do I want it to... I want it to be kind of highlighty over here, too. And the reason I want that is because this sticks out. The piping pops out of the, the uniform a little bit. We can see that right over here. Yeah, it takes some time to get to Voyager. Voyager is a... Well, like I said, the best part of Voyager is when the hair change occurs. But you have to get through the Kazons, and you have to get through the Vidians. And I feel like the Kazons and the Vidians are an interesting concept that Voyager had, but neither one of them were ideal. You know what I mean? It's like they weren't fully thought out. And we're still in the phase where they kept instructing Kate Mulgrew to be more butch because, you know, nobody will accept a woman just being a woman, and just being a normal human being. They have to be a man. <laughs> it's just it's so weird. Later on, she found her feet, and <clears throat> it's... Yeah, she found her feet. Well, I... Oh, absolutely. There's nothing wrong with the first couple of seasons of Voyager. It's just that it's not the world's best. It's not the best of Star Trek. You know what I mean? Um, and especially when they let Kate finally just be herself. Because she can be a commanding character all by herself. She doesn't need to be pretending to be anything other than her. She does just fine. I'm on the highlight. That's all right. I want to be down here, really. But that's okay. But yeah, so... Okay, the next thing we got to do is we've got to put in all of her greebles and doodly wops, the pieces of her uniform that make some sense. Um, Kate Mulgrew is actually a wonderful actress and does a good job... And it's active, aggravating yeah it, it it's silly um, and it, it was a silly aspect when they I mean it's funny how weirdly sexist attitudes can just pop in. And, but then you still see it. Um, I still see people complaining today that Michael Burnham is, she just spends every episode crying. And I'm like, she doesn't actually. And I don't know where they're getting this. And the whole point is that they're infantizing her. And that's ridiculous. It doesn't need to happen. Um, and it's, it's difficult. 
and I'm just kind of doing this. I mean, it's one of the things. And this is my captain, right? This is who's in charge of my ship. This is the main character of the story. And she is a person. She is a human being. She even looks young. I mean, it's intentional. That's a design uh, piece. But she's my captain, and she's in charge, and she's a goofball. And really, as far as characters go, she's the closest. The closest character to her in design is Hawkeye Pierce from MASH. Um, that's like the closest character archetype to her. She's irreverent. She's bizarre. She's strange. Um, she does things which she shouldn't be doing. And that's just that's part of who she is as a character. Um, and that's why she's relegated to a Corvette. Because she just doesn't want to follow the orders a lot. But, you know, she does follow the orders. She just does it with a Hawaiian shirt or whatever. I mean that figuratively, figuratively not literally. Um, obviously, uh, she doesn't wear Hawaiian shirts, but... The thing is that I have met men and women who are of all kinds and all stripes. And I think it's toxic on both men and women's parts to say that men can't cry and women always cry. That's toxic on both sides. Okay. This uniform patch represents Renum and the outside is Dale. Oh, we yes, she she so we are in a conflicted character here. She's got issues. <laughs> she only wears black. She doesn't wear, well. So she told me she likes to wear black. I'm sure that if you told her she had to wear pink, she'd just grumble at you a lot. Um, I mean, she's not, she just, it's just, it would be, you'd see her in, in pink and you'd be like, okay, that's not right. <laughs> I mean, it just wouldn't fit, right? So she'd wear black, or wear, wear pink, but she just prefers black. She to put all of her all of that into she just but yes that's but she's irreverent I mean she's she has just the basic respect for protocol she's very patriotic as a character she's definitely adheres to the rules which she thinks are logical but you know if she hits that regulation that says you can only play music before you know you know before 9 p.m. she's going to be like really <laughs> she's going to play her music at like midnight as long as nobody cares you know as long as it doesn't bother anybody She's just really not that interested, and in... that's the nature of her character. And as long as she's not on duty, drinking is something she likes to do as well, and that is a given on that one as well. The outside part of this patch here is a ringed planet, which is... Um, representative of the main world, Delhi, or Delay. So there's that. I'm going to come around here and just overrun it so I can see my lines. Because those are my guides, right? I can come back then and just trim in here. So... Yep, because of her daughter. 
That's the nature of the beast. She has issues because of the death of her kid. And that makes makes her a little bit more irreverent. She feels not that it was the fault of the military, but the fault of, of society in general that killed her daughter in a lot of ways. But that's what she externally says. But truth is, internally, she feels like it's her fault. And so she is really struggling with that one. And she's going to struggle with that one. But one of the reasons she's attracted to being a captain is because, in a way, all of her crew are kids, or her kids, in a strange sort of way. She's making up for it in her, um, in her sort of her own little bizarre way, really. So, yeah, she's a character. We'll get to the other characters here soon, too, because we've got to go on ahead, and I've been putting in the bios of those characters as well. All right, so this guy is reflective, the patch is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here with a larger brush and a darker color and just run along like this. And just kind of do this number and then get the bottom half of the patch sort of into this darker color. Right? Um, the patch, <laughs> I'm such an old school Trekkie. The patch is exactly that same kind of stuff that the original series patches all are and that, that gold, not that sort of goldish color going on there. Um, the other side of this patch is going to be a very bright, like reflecting the light white, like this. And this is why I did two layers. Okay. Keep going back to pin because it's like my go to thing. <laughs> All right. There we go. When you look at that, that just is there. Now it needs the outside stitching, so to speak, put on it. So we'll do that next. Right, and this is outside stitching. What I really like about this particular brush is that it has sort of a, a rough to it. It's kind of rough going around that line there so you can kind of see underneath it a little bit it works really well all right on this layer here we're going to cut through that and just trim that off make sure it's trim okay we put in that now the only thing that's left is she's got rank bars on her um, on her jacket itself So being gold. Now 
There was also talk. These are Commander's bars, by the way. She actually is not, in fact, a full captain. She's just a captain because she's in charge of a ship. And all captains by tradition, or all people in charge of ships by tradition are captain. However, I was watching a thing on submarines. And one of the traditions on submarines is to call your captain either skipper or old man. And I thought it'd be really funny if they called her old man. I thought that'd be great. That'd be pretty awesome. Because the tradition is she's the old man. And considering what she looks like, I think her crew might find that to be funnier than anything else. And she would be entertained by it. So, I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to put in this darker line. It has a certain amount of irreverence to call her old man. And I love it. And I think she would love it. And so I've been thinking about that. I don't know whether that's a good idea or not. I don't know if people would, because my audience would be similar to Trekkies, and plausibly even Trekkies themselves, I don't know if people would take that as um, like Dax, like she's got a, a various life or lifetimes of experience or something like that. Right? That's, that's what I was saying, is I don't want people to confuse it for Jadzia and Ezri. But, on the same token, it has the irreverence that I kind of am looking for. certain amount of irreverence to it. And I think that they would call her Skipper, but then in reference, third person reference might be old man. The old man wouldn't appreciate that. You know, and then you end up with, who the heck's this old man that they keep talking about, right? There we go. The gold bars are in. So maybe they would call her Skipper straight up. So in the original, um, the original comic that I was writing, Julie Cochran was called Skipper, and they brought over uh, like the first time that we met. You just stopped playing randomly over here. Why'd you stop playing? Did anybody? Oh, because there's no repeat. I knew that. Click. Um, <clears throat> originally, whenever I made this original comic in 2005, the concept was, so there is, you know, I think we're pretty much okay with almost done with this guy, at least, and now it's time for just random little dinking, but let's go ahead and, so when I originally did the uh, Star Trek fan comic back in 2005, the character, Julie Cochran, um, was going to be taking over command of this destroyer. And a destroyer in the Star Trek universe is one of these guys, but without this part of the ship, and instead just one warp nacelle under here. Right, so it's the dish, or the saucer, and one warp nacelle, and then the neck, and that's all you had. And it was considered to be a smaller ship. It was a destroyer. You just kind of did your thing. And, you know, the idea was, um, oh, yeah, Old Codger. I like Old Codger. Um, so the, uh, I, I feel like Bodach would sound too much like, I don't know, it's, anything starting with a B and ending with ch. Sounds like it's just going to end up weird. Um, although, she's irreverent. That could possibly fit, fit her too. 
Um, so the original idea was that there was an episode of the original series called Turnabout Intruder. And Turnabout Intruder was a horrible, horrible episode. Um, my lord. <laughs> yep, that's good. I like that one too. Um, Turnabout Intruder established something that should never have been established. Everybody, at this point in time, it was it's literally the last episode of the original series. It's episode number 79. It's very, very end. And this crazy woman is um, saying that she wants to trade places with Kirk so that she can be in command of a starship because women weren't allowed to command starships, which is against everything that Roddenberry had designed for Star Trek, against and had Janice Lester was this weird character that they brought in, and it's just strange. It's totally strange. Um, it doesn't fit the mythos of Star Trek. It doesn't fit, you know, it was obviously written by somebody who came in to try to make a point and was just a little too on the nose. But it's canon. So when I built this series that I was writing, I had a star a female captain in, 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 on the starship. So what I did was a couple of little tricks. One, I didn't call the destroyer a starship. I called it a destroyer. So the starships, so that would only mean that for whatever reason, Janice Lester could not be in charge of the 13 Constitution class ships. And that at least minimized the damage. But then I also made it so that she wasn't called Captain, she was called Skipper. And so when we first meet the chief engineer and she beams aboard, she goes, you know, Captain, it's good to be aboard. And, and she's like, no, you can't call me Captain, call me Skipper for reasons that I have not figured out. Skippers are in charge of destroyers and captains are in charge of the big ships. So, you know, yada, yada. And so I established sort of a a different world there. I'm going to continue that trend moving over. She's still going to be called Skipper. Um, because that's she's the skipper of a small ship. And the destroyer, destroyer captains will be called Skipper. And the little corvettes will be called Skipper too. And so it's a thing. Um, but I like establishing that that's sort of a style that we've got going on there. Um... Yeah, did I go way off into the weeds? I went way off into the weeds. I like my lord. Yeah, but I do kind of like the referring to her as old man or what would you say? Old codger. <laughs> Something like that. Because that'd be cool. I think that would definitely be the irreverence we're looking for with this particular character. She's tired of being, I mean, she's in her mid to late 30s, and every time anybody meets her, she has to go through the, she goes through the entire process of saying, I'm not really 14. You know, I've got 10 years of command school and, you know, five years of tactical school and, you know, all this stuff. She's got a history in her, and... You know, everybody's going to be looking at her going, oh, you're so cute, and patting her on the head. And she'll be like, yeah, no. <laughs> so there's, it's a thing. Eh, you know what? Trekkies are Trekkies, and they're, they've got their own, like, weirdnesses. And I think one of them is the adherence to canon. Canon can be really awesome. I love canonical things. Mostly because I'm one of those people that I lock up when you say I can do anything. You know, so if you say, you, you know, you can write anything you want, guy. I'm like, and I get all locked up. I like having just a little bit of constraint. Because if you can just tell me you can draw anything you want, but you have to draw these, draw it inside these three or four structures, then it's easier for me. So, at some point, wouldn't that be common knowledge across Starfleet? Yeah, probably. I, uh, but in the, you mean you're talking about Ward and coming aboard the, the Tamerlan. 
Yes. Um, although I have, I have, I know that whenever Navy personnel change from ship to ship, they have to be indoctrinated into the culture of the ship. People like today in the Navy coming from, say, a small surface ship going to a submarine, that's an entirely different culture. The culture on submarines is completely different. Um, or, for that matter, um, small surface ships to a carrier. The culture on a carrier and the culture on a submarine are very different universes. Up to and including weird things like uh, meal cycles, like the way they eat and when they eat and how they eat on submarines is a different thing than it is on any surface ship. Um, oh, you mean you're talking about her? That, that about her age being sort of common knowledge? Yeah, but one of the things I kind of want to explore is a little bit of that prejudice, right? You'll know, I mean, she's got bars on her. It's clear that she's a, a commander. So that's, you know, but it doesn't stop people from being jerks. <laughs> you know, it's like, aren't you a little young to be wearing commander's bars? No, actually, I'm not. You know, it's kind of like, really? <laughs> Mostly because in this future, we're, we're getting over women being in command. We're getting over all of that stuff. That's done. There were too few human beings pulled off of Earth in the in this story arc for them to sit there and say, well, women can't, you know, this or women can't that. And it was too much of a survival of the fittest structure. And that so that's abolished. So they're not gonna they're not gonna diss her for being female. So I wanted to add that to be to, to put that back in so that there's still tension on her. Um, so that there's something for her to struggle against. And that makes her character interesting again, because I had that same problem with, uh... right? And that's one of those other things. I, I wonder about things like this all the time. Um, yesterday I was at Best Buy picking up uh, a HDMI connector for my kid's computer so that we could bring up his computer. I just installed uh, the new video card. And it was at Best Buy, and I, you know, there are all these people wandering around, I need to find the HDMI cable, so I picked this person, and she actually kind of looked a little confused for a second there, like, wait, there are other people around me, why'd you pick me? And I'm like, because you were closest to me? And so I asked her where, she was like, yay, I'll go get you your HDMI cable. And all the way there, I'm like, so, I mean, he had an, a VGA cable, but... I need an HDMI because that's the only way to get out of the video card. And she's like, what video card? And I was like, oh, it's a GeForce 10, 1070 Ti. And she's like, oh, well, that's kind of an older card. But, you know, we just had this, like, discussion. And I was like, she's a geek. She knows these things. Why not talk to her? <laughs> it's like, but it's the same thing you were talking about. And I, well, I think you and I have always been on the same page, or at least... We're on the same page in, on this particular topic. Didn't necessarily mean to go afield on this one. Um, but anyway, so... Yeah, I can see that being a problem in construction and installs and stuff like that. My mom worked in industries that were male-dominated through the 70s and the 80s. She worked in, in the movie industry, and that was brutal. And I watched her climb uphill through the entire 80s. And it left an, a very strong impression on me. So much so, my storytelling is this way. Um, it's just the way it is. Every one of my storytelling things is like this. I don't think so either. I feel like... I mean, uh, I think the biggest problem I usually have with my friends is... Uh, I speak slower than my brain moves. And so sometimes I will do a, 
huh, I wonder if this is sort of a way to, and I'm trying to head back and people, I, my mouth doesn't move enough and I, and they just see me over here somewhere and then they're like, that's not right. Uh, I'm, that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> I have that problem a lot. I'll think something I'm, I wonder if it's possible that the patriarchy started because, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then, but somehow people will catch me at some step through this and they'll be like, so you're saying we should have a patriarchy? No, I'm just pondering how it began. That's all. <laughs> no, it's like... Or on the same other, I've thought about matriarchal societies. And they'll catch me over there on that side. And they'll be like, wait, now you think that women should be in charge? And I'm like, look, that's not where I'm going on this one. I'm just saying, I'm over here, you know, pondering. I think that's the only time that I usually get crossways with people. So I'm feeling comfortable about this kind of portrait. I, It's not as painterly as I wanted it to be. But I like it. It's okay. It's solid. Um... And it works, so I think I kind of want to do something with the sky. Like, I feel like the sky is just cyan. <laughs> like, it's a solid cyan color. There's got to be something I could do with it. So I think I could probably punch up the sky a little bit. Punch up the sky. That sounds good. That sounds, that's the name of my new album, It's Punch Up the Sky. It's plausible maybe her nose needs more shadow. I don't know. The good news is I think I can probably flatten it at this point in time and then just work with values, light and dark, and and that would probably be okay. I love owning that. <laughs> I love not knowing stuff. It means we get to learn. <laughs> and I love learning. So, but I appreciate that. Learning is cool. And that's the bestest stuff ever. I think, I, I, I feel sad for people who've stopped learning. You know what I mean? I feel like that, like, that's such a sad space to be in. We should always learn. We should learn until the day we die. I feel like I just saw George. Where is George? He's around here somewhere. He's being a pest. Uh, George has earned himself nights in the bathroom recently because he's into chewing up things. As soon as the the lights turn off in the house, he wanders through the house chewing up things like boxes and stuff like that. So he's earning himself uh, some... He, he's earning himself spending the night in the bathroom, which I don't know if he's quite grasping what that means. But he's out now, so we're all up and away. Okay, guys. Thanks for joining me today. Um, take one last look at the picture we got going on here. Um, and I feel like, like I said, I feel like I kind of want to flatten it and then go through and work on values of light and dark. But uh, we should be good. I feel like this is a, a good start. Um V, this is actually intentionally designed because your project and commission is coming up. And I feel like that needs to be a painterly thing. And I'm still working on my painterly skills. So my painterly skills still need to be punched up. And so that's just his practice. And that's all I can do. So, okay, guys. I appreciate you guys being here with me today. And, um hanging out with me and I'll see you tomorrow and we'll just keep plugging away at these things and remember to keep your eyes on the stars. Bye-bye.